Welcome back to the podcast. We are here on After the Buzzer. I know it's been a minute, uh, but we're going to talk about some of the NBA teams, if they're going up or down as far as stock. This is a segment we did prior, but nobody heard that one. So let's get to that intro music. I am your co-host, Kearney McKeague, and with me as always are my longtime friends and co-host, Nolan Chang, Jerry Shirai. Say what's up to the pod, boys. Hello. Hello. Oh, boy. The voice is going to be a struggle for this we, pod. We got the <laughs> voices right now. I know. I'm they just have like, been oh. used and abused this past week. Not just that, but yeah, it's, it's way too early. <laughs> My voice is still doing that that croaky thing it does in the early morning. But anyway, this is a segment that we did uh, drop on a previous uh, segment, but we never released. Um, so this one here, we're going to be talking about some of the teams in the Western Conference uh, because there wasn't too many big transactional things that happened in the last uh, week or so since kind of like that one day where everything happened. So... Um, just kind of getting into the teams here in the Western Conference. We're going to go through them and go uh, and give our takes whether or not they are kind of stuck up or stuck down teams. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to start off with the very bottom of the Western Conference. San Antonio Spurs, um, some key notables out. Kata Bates, Diop, uh, he ended up going to Phoenix. Um, then they did bring in Reggie Bullock via trade from the Dallas Mavericks. Chetty Osman via trade from Cleveland, along with Lamar Stevens, Victor Webanyama, obviously the biggest name of all in the draft. And then they kind of retained a lot of the rest of their core. So throwing it over to you first, Nolan. Um, you heard the names. San Antonio Spurs were literally, you know, last in the entire league. So what are your kind of thoughts on um, their team, whether or not they're kind of going to be better or worse this year? Um, I definitely think they're going to be better. Uh, mm -hmm. How much better is really dependent on how many more moves they make, if any. Um, adding Reggie Bullock, who's a great, I would say, 3 and D player. Mm -hmm. um, he had some success uh, coming from the Mavs a little bit last season. So I, I believe that he can make any team better, especially in an offense that is a team ball kind of system. Um, mm -hmm. And now you have Victor. It's going to kind of open up some space for other players on the court. Um, Chetty Seems Osman. like a very Greg Popovich type of <clears throat> yeah, right? guy. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I actually, in that same vein, I think that Chetty Osman is also kind of a Greg Popovich kind of player because mm -hmm. he's been around since um, the second stint with LeBron. Yep. And then kind of through this rebuild stage into what we can say is a... <laughs> and he's an international player, which... <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, as well. Like, he always has his international <laughs> exactly. guys, yeah. Um, I, I do think that Chetty kind of got... I wouldn't say he's going to be in a star player. Or, he's, not, <laughs> not, he's not like a... He's not a <laughs> I prototypical you're gonna starter. Say, I think Chetty got... Chetty, let's just <laughs> <laughs> no, got chettier. He's, you know, he's, 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 chetty. he's, he's kind of chetty, chetty. <laughs> no, but um, uh. Uh, I think that he fits in well with a good team ball kind of system. And mm -hmm. when the Cavs were doing their rebuild, obviously, you had Darius Garland, you had Colin Sexton, you had um, Jared Allen, now you have Mobley and Donovan Mitchell. Not a lot, a lot of ball to share around with Chetty, right? And mm -hmm. Chetty, I think, did a great job when he was with LeBron. As, of course, we always talk about LeBron can kind of make other players look a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. So if that kind of translates over to when he moves over now with the Spurs, I think that he can have a fruitful career. Will I, will I say he's going to be the starter for sure? No, but mm -hmm. he has an opportunity to make it so. Um, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes out being maybe like a – maybe like a nine, three and four player, which by standards on the Spurs team, that's pretty dang good. So yeah. I, I'm, I'm very pleased with these kind of pickups. And obviously, because they're last, there's only one way to go, and that's up. So I, I do think they're going to be a better team this year. Yeah. You have a – where do you think if you were to place them? There's 15 teams in the Western Conference. They were number 15. As they are now. 
Yeah. In the West, I see them, you know, I'm not going to doubt what Victor can do for a team. So I'm going to hmm. say they may flirt as a play-in. Oh, okay. I like that take. Throwing it over to you, Jared. Where are you kind of standing with Spurs and their moves? I was thinking like nine. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah you, went, like you went up there. All yeah, right. I mean, there's a lot. I know like that Victor still kind of has to prove himself, but at the same time, you, you know, it's Greg. Can't go wrong with him. Yeah, like, that's true. He, he, and he's and Victor is like like we talked about it in the last one. Like he's uh, skipping FIBA to play the summer league to gain the chemistry, and mm-hmm. you know, so I think he'll he'll mold a little faster, especially if you want him to be an all star or be the face of your team. Like I think him working with uh, Popovich a lot earlier will actually help him and the team in the long run. So yeah, I was like, they definitely seem like one of those teams where they have like that depth where. One, they're younger, but they could, you know, improve a lot more. But for sure, if, like, they make a move, which they can because they do have the assets, I mean, yeah, we'll yeah be they, looking at a whole I mean, it's like Nolan said, team. depending on what they do with the rest of the, the, the free agency and everything, mm-hmm. like, they could be kind of scary because they, they're they retaining a lot. They brought in the decent pieces like Bullock and, and Osmond, you know, and mm-hmm. just one – I feel like, like, Every other team, though, they're one piece away. So, <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Sean Cooey, big fan of the San Antonio Spurs. Hey, We're hey, hoping that your team ends up being better. Um, moving to the next one, we got the Houston Rockets. <clears throat> they were number 14, just above the San Antonio Spurs. Uh, notable guys in and out. Notable outs were kind of just KJ Martin and Ty Ty Washington. Uh, both give, are both traded away dur- during this offseason thus far. Notable incoming. Dylan Brooks, Jeff Green, Aaron Holiday, Jock Landale, uh, who from Phoenix. I like that. I like that. Yeah, so, solid center. Amin Thompson, uh, obviously, Fred Van Vliet, and Cam Whitmore, who was, for all intents and purposes, seen as a guy who should have been in the lottery but fell all the way to the second round, I believe. So um, throwing it over to you first, Jared. What are your kind of thoughts on this young up-and-coming Houston Rockets team who spent a lot of money on the duo of Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Vliet. Uh, I don't know. Hard to say. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I don't know. I think they, I mean, what are you second to last? So you kind of got to be thinking they're moving up a little bit. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. they did have the youth. Um, they did bring in Van Fleet to kind of hold down the point guard role. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we, like we talked about, not a big fan of Dylan Brooks bringing him in. Uh, you said it in the intro of this, uh, Jock Lando. Like, I think that's a great addition for their team as well. Mm-hmm. And then just the, the building of uh, Thompson. You know, this is, for yeah. all intents and purposes, uh, this is really still a really young team. And yep. it'll be very interesting to see where they go from it. But, I mean, the upside with a young team is they scrap. There's always a chip on the shoulder. Like, they, they'll play hard for you. Um, man, it's just you're, you are playing in the West. We always talk about the West being such a tough conf- uh, conference. So, I mean, I'm not saying that it's going to be a lot better, but maybe they do move up a couple places because of of these just these moves. You know, maybe Brooks being Brooks, as much as we hate him, like he's kind of a defensive pest. Mm-hmm. You know, he really is. Um, Fred Van Fleet has the championship leadership. He knows how to score. He knows how to get his guys involved. And... I think that's that's kind of what the what this team was missing because they had like you said I think it was you or you, Nolan had said that it's all about like they have a lot of egos on that team. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so I think Fred Van Fleet's not really that ego guy. I think he can ca- kind of calm it and and help facilitate. Like if he's the one handling the ball, he'll facilitate. Hey, you're taking too many shots for give me the ball. Mm-hmm. I'm going to move it around somewhere else and things like that. So it it could work out or it could implode because of all the egos and you add Dylan Brooks to this and then Van Fleet's not giving me the ball enough. And, you know, so it, it could really go other ways, uh, either way, but I'm think I'm going a little, <laughs> maybe up a little up. And maybe yeah, like I mean, one or two places up. Uh, I, I mean, they might like, like we always talk about, they might flirt with the playing game, but 
There's so yeah. much talent in the Western Conference. It's right funny now. because as I'm looking over the list, there are a few teams that we're going to get to. But um, yeah, I could definitely see them slipping below this team if that ends up being the case. So uh, throwing it over to you, Nolan, before we move on to the next one, what are your kind of thoughts? Anything uh, up, down, where you at with this team? Um, <clears throat> I actually think that they have a lot of upside now. Um, as we discussed, you know, Ime Odoka, kind of manage some egos Mm -hmm. you have fred van fleet and jeff green who are both now at nba champions who kind of bring that veteran mentality for all intents and purposes dylan brooks has been a playoff player for multiple seasons now so he Mm -hmm. can also bring that kind of vet mindset um and it's really going to depend on the first half of the season like you're going to see these games where things kind of get tough a little rough and tumble for them um Mm -hmm. as they're trying to figure each other out, trying to figure out the new system that they're running, trying to manage each other's egos. Um, If it does work out, I think they can be a play-in team because you have this youthful team where there's quality talent through and through, and now you have an opportunity. I wouldn't say you would be the best defensive team, but if you have something along the lines of how the Kings were last season, you can Mm -hmm. make a good run. And it just depends on how everything kind of plays. Um, I I don't want to say that they're going to be a playoff team, but I wouldn't be surprised if somehow they snuck in there because of just maybe they they do start figuring out, they start clicking, and they do put all the team in the mm-hmm. forefront rather than themselves. Yeah. I'm, I'm very curious if there are some of these teams we're going to get to that you guys feel are going to just... <laughs> but uh, anyway, moving on to the next team we're going to talk about, uh, that'll be the Utah Jazz. So... Obviously, they already had their kind of star-ish guy in Laurie Markkinen um, there. We'll see if he has a you know a repeat of what he was able to do last year. Um, but obviously, they did lose Rudy Gay. They lost Damian Jones. And they brought in John Collins. Not a ton of big moves. Um, I believe, if anything, one, they're you know interested in Dame Lillard. So we'll kind of see how that pans out for them. Um, and then they kind of also just have just a plethora of like younger guys on the team so throwing it over to you nolan what is your kind of take on this utah jazz team um you know i think it they may just start kind of how they did last year where they were suddenly a top team um i as they are right now i don't necessarily see them moving up much higher um because you so have our first possible stock down team then first possible um and I don't want to say it's just because this sounds like a really stupid excuse for it, but you have Larry Markkinen who's going through his military requirement for fin- Finland, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, is he able to touch a ball out there? Like, is is he still working on his game to improve more and more? Um, you have John Collins added, which is a great guy, but he is mm-hmm. a off-ball player. Um, he doesn't go and get get the buckets for himself he he's a great help side defender and get a ton of blocks for you guys um so that's the peak that's the upside for them but they still need like a better kind of guards mindset right now i think what mm-hmm. they they added they didn't they add someone like mid-season as a they got rubio back didn't they right talent horton tucker from you guys yeah, but I mean, he yeah. kind of didn't show up for what people thought. Chris he Dunn was, was like the big addition. Yeah, they added Chris Dunn for a little bit, yeah, yeah. give him mm-hmm. a couple of ten days. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see them moving much higher if this is yeah. where the, kind of the ball stops rolling for them. Um, I do think that they have the assets to make something exciting happen for them if they can mm-hmm. pull off the Dame Limerick trade. I think that would be great. Um, but the pieces, like kind of in the same idea that the Mavs needed a stretch forward wing for Luca. I don't think John Collins was the piece that exactly was going to help the Utah Jazz make the jump. Um, mm-hmm. Doesn't hurt to add him to the team. I'm not saying that it was a terrible idea, but it doesn't do much for them. So yeah. I don't see them moving up much higher if this is where they kind of stop with their, their market. Yeah, I agree with that take. Swishing, swinging it over to you, Jared. What are your kind of thoughts on the Jazz? Up, down, where are you at? Um, I would say I'm, I'm in agreement as, as the roster is constructed as of right now, I'm mm-hmm. thinking down, I'm thinking down yeah. because some of those teams that we just talked about that, that really did well in the free agency or in the draft, mm-hmm. like, I think they're adding better pieces that'll help them, um, get higher than the jazz. Well, yeah, so. I agree. 
Um, moving on to the next team is one that we often talk about with the Dallas Mavericks here who finished 11th last year. Do we skip um, Portland? We did skip Portland going over to Portland right there. The Trailblazers. Yep. I got you. They were so insignificant maybe for me. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, they did end up re-signing Jeremy Grant. Um, obviously, they get the number three overall pick in Scoot Henderson. Um they do lose uh, Drew Eubanks and Cam Reddish, and obviously they're dealing with the current situation of the impending uh, loss of Damian Lillard. So we'll kind of see what happens with him in the next few days, probably because it seems like even right now, I've been getting a lot of things in my timeline regarding the Chicago Bulls and Zach Levine yep, uh, having that. preliminary talks with the 76ers and the Blazers. So uh, we shall see what occurs. Um, but as of right now, um, more than likely, Dame is out of on his way out of the city. So, throwing it over to you, Jared. Um, is this a team that you're? Where are we at with them? Because obviously, we are on the way down. I mean, <laughs> even, I, I mean, honestly, even if even if Dame were to stay for some odd reason, odd, odd, odd reason, um, <clears throat> sorry, I just think that there's there wasn't anything brought in. I mean, even yeah. like, yeah, you got the number three for Scoot, but like we said, you're either going to keep Dame or you're going to get rid of that three and get some pieces yeah. and they haven't done anything. So maybe this is like, in all honesty, with Dame heading on out, I can see this being like a full rebuild year, um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> training Scoot to take the reins, you know, put the ball in his hand and let, let everybody else work. They did sign Jeremy Grant, but I mean... You, you don't really, I mean, that's, yeah, exactly. Nolan's face. It says he also it all. resigned I mean, Matisse Thibault, which was another, mm-hmm. like, why resign him if you're going to go rebuild anyway? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. unless he's going to be a part of the three-way trade talk. Mm-hmm. Trade bait, maybe. Yeah, I'm not, I don't, I don't I'm know. I'm not entirely sure how fixers. that works, but I, I do think that if he signs with them, as a restricted free agent, he's oh, not gotcha. able to then be used in a trade for at least another, you know, 60 days or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, gotcha. yeah, yeah, I've been deep on, <laughs> I've been deep on the NBA Twitter. So I've been reading a lot of those like rules on how things like that works. And, and the things behind uh, the scenes that nobody really knows. Yeah, it's like, funny because really I was just about, like, so. there are some people, like, I think we're pretty knowledgeable. Well, there are some. There are some, some just, keyboard warriors. Yeah. Speaking <laughs> of warriors. <laughs> like, yeah. But anyway, yeah. yeah, sorry. As constructed now, they're going down. Um, even, de- I mean, it really depends on what kind of superstar you're really bringing back or what yeah, pieces exactly. you're bringing in, in for a game. But even at that, I don't think, that, I don't, I don't think so. There's nothing. Uh, nothing. All the other teams are kind of established a bit, mm-hmm. or below them right now, and maybe even above them. And I don't see them really like going higher than. Man, they might. If if Dame goes and they don't bring anybody in, they might be bottom of the pool. Like yeah. that's a sad part to say. I mean, bouncing off of your point too. I'm like, no offense. I mean, he's my boy, Zach Levine. You my boy, but he's not <laughs> the type of guy that you bring in when you're about to rebuild. I feel like you know what I mean. No. Like he's not. On um, he's not really that much younger, and on top of that, he's also not like a like big time like let's rebuild with this dude. We tried that and it didn't really work out that well. So, uh, throwing over to you, Nolan, where are you at with this team? Are they for you? They're going to be at the bottom of the Western Conference next year as well. I have never been some, most sure of something in my life, Keone. <laughs> they are going to be <laughs> at the bottom. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, on the flip side of it, hey, it's about damn time, Dame. I, I am one of the people who am not upset with you finally requesting a trade after, you mm. know, your your mindset of I'm going to stick through the grind. And, yo, it's time. It's, it's, it's time to get <laughs> gone, man. I, I don't have any issues with it. You deserve to finally be on a real contending team, not just a team that makes playoffs. Um, because when it gets to playoffs, half the time with those – with those teams that you did have that were making runs, a lot of it was just you. Yeah. McCollum was also the the second leg of that run, yeah. and you guys traded him away. So yeah. I don't understand why people think that he needs to stick around for a franchise that doesn't do much for him. So yeah. he's going to be gone. I'm I'm going to say the over on maybe like eighty percent. He is gone before the start of season, and. Mm-hmm. They are going to be at the bottom, trying to do the rebuild. 
I think it may be the perfect storm for both Dame and for Scoot to kind of get their own light because you have Scoot, mm-hmm. kind of a side thing. Brandon Miller's being pretty ass right now in the summer league against other yep. summer league ranked players. So I think that you have the benefit of having the number three, who I think should have been the number two pick in the lottery. And now you can kind of give him the ball in his hands, let him go through the trials and tribulations of being a starting guard on a rebuilding franchise and see where that takes you. Yeah. I mean, we're hoping for the best, probably going to see the worst. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens with them. Um, Moving on from the Troy Blazers to a little bit lighter of a note. Um, Obviously, like I said, team we talk about a lot, the Dallas Mavericks who were number 11 last year in the Western Conference. Um, They obviously do go about their off season sort of making some hardcore <laughs> solid uh kind of like additions they did lose or they did trade out of Davis Bertans big contract Reggie Bullock's big contract um they did trade away Justin Holiday as well they bring in Seth Curry former teammate of uh Kyrie Irving Dante Exum Rashawn Holmes and Grant Williams now on a signing trade yep. with the Celtics in a three team or so Throwing it over to you, Nolan. I mean, thoughts on the set on the Dallas Mavericks now adding those guys. They finally get a guy we <clears> believe <throat> to be kind of their stretch guy, you know, the one we've yeah. been sort um, of hoping for there. Yeah. I, I do like the addition of Grant Williams, and I also like that Grant Williams is not someone who's ball dominant, who needs the ball in his hands, mm-hmm. um, especially playing alongside Jalen Brown and Tatum for a good minute. Um, do I think this is the perfect lineup for what we wanted constructed around Luca and or Kyrie? No, but I think it does have enough compromise where you can see a deep run with this team. Um, mm-hmm. I think the biggest uh, dark horse of the free agency was Rashawn Holmes. I think he he's a when he's healthy, he's a good maybe ten and nine player, nine and nine player. Mm-hmm. He, he's there for you, and the and the Mavericks love their big men who get the boards get the open buckets especially with someone who can find you like Luca and Kyrie now um so that's a great pickup I know they still have Kleber and um Powell so that'll be still kind of interesting to see what their rotation is I know they stuck with Powell for a lot of the season because they said he's our main starter Mm -hmm. that should change at some point um another dark horse in the draft was the dark Derek Lively pickup and we talked Mm -hmm. about I think last pod I love that he's a stretch big he's kind of the prototypical young Brooke Lopez that you would want to see. Um, he has a lot to kind of learn still in the actual league right now, but he can grow into something big. Um, there, not sorry, Jared's kind of talk about it last time. Seth Curry's back. Give this boy the ball back. Get him on the court because mm-hmm. Seth Curry is still, he's a Curry. You know, he, he does well on the court as a wing. Doesn't have to be a starter, but he he'll, he'll get you the job done. Um, yeah. And you still have Tim Hardaway Jr. That's the biggest thing. I, I talked about it last time. When Kyrie's maybe going through his stuff, Luca has his you know seasonal ankle injury out for a couple mm-hmm. weeks. Tim Hardaway Jr. is the guy that they go to. And the fact that you still have him is the biggest thing for them. Um, yeah. So I think this roster, they, what, finished 10th? 11th? No, 11th? 11, they, 11, they're, they're going miss. up. They're going up yeah. for sure. I would say they they may be a top of the play in, or if not, maybe mm-hmm. the six. A solid starting lineup. Now I'm looking at them. Yeah. Like Kyrie, yeah. Tim Hardaway, Luca, Grant Williams, yep. Rashawn Holmes. I mean, it's not bad. Throwing it over mm-hmm. to you, Jared. Where are you at with them? Up, down. I know this is a team that you want to see succeed in, that you actually want to see, you know, Luca finally get some help. So he got some help this offseason. Uh, what are your thoughts? I went Nolan on pretty much every point. Uh, they, they're going mm-hmm. up. The one thing that he talked about is the injury or the Kyrie days. Um, mm-hmm. Luca gets hurt because Kyrie of the days. way that's he a, has to play. That's a good way of putting it, Kyrie <clears> days. <throat> yeah. yeah. Luca gets hurt because he has to do so much. Now because he has a little bit more help, he won't have to do as much on, on the offensive yeah. side of the ball and just be just be everything for them. He can get that into Kyrie when Kyrie point. has his days. Like Nolan said, Seth's the man. Tim Hardaway has has proven that he can hold it down. And now mm. it's just working with the the Grant Williams, the Powell Holmes, just that that little rotation and uh, seeing what – honestly, in, in those rotations, it's going to just really be who's hot because you know what you're getting for the one, two, and three, mm-hmm. right? And then you know what you're getting off the bench in the one, two, and three. But it's that, that four and five that you want to see, hey, what rotation is going to work best? And – 
that I think, like Nolan said, they can go deep. And I think they can go deep based off of just figuring the fours and fives out. So, yeah. So, yeah, yeah it's definitely, they're definitely going up. Um, they're missing the playoffs. The uh, last year was was very, uh, I would say, uh, uncharacteristic despite whatever season they had because they mm. were kind of in command of their own fate, like going into, like I would say, what, the last two weeks of the season? Yeah. And they just straight tanked the last two weeks. So, I mean, it's okay. Yeah, it was pretty I mean, terrible I mean, they had to go. They had to go down so the Lakers could go up. Yeah, so, no, they, literally. You know what I mean? Like I think, you know I think I mean? they so had to like, falter in order yeah. for you guys to exactly. Yeah, because so. if you guys had both stayed on the same winning track, I think they would have just eked it out at the very end there. So, yeah, so. yeah, it was a definitely interesting off season. I mean, uh, end of season for the uh, Western Conference. But throwing it over to the next team, a lot younger of a team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Obviously, they are you know on a different path now, but they do have. Um, a total of 18 guys because they didn't really lose anybody, but they did add a lot of, I mean, supposed contracts that will probably be waived, like Davis Bertans is one, Victor Oladipo, another potential one, Patty Mills, another potential one. Um, and then they bring in Vasily Micic, uh, that who was right. one of those, yeah, one of those international guys that we thought, um, you know, big deal in the, in the you know, European league. Um, so we'll kind of see what he can do for them, but he did get like a three year guaranteed contract. So looking over this team, obviously they retain a lot of the guys They get Chet Holmgren back from injury. Jared, what are your kind of thoughts on this team's, uh, projected outcome for the year? So they made the plan, right? <clears throat> they no? didn't. I thought no, they, they did. Lo- they, they did. The last they, team. they lost to the Timberwolves in the yeah. opening round. Oh, or, okay. Oh yeah, so no. the, pl- the play in to get into the play in was that it? Was it that I one think they one lost game to match? You guys, right? No, the we league? beat the Wolves to retain yeah. seven. Yeah, they played each other, right? And then, oh, they played the Pelicans, so they lost yeah. the Pelicans first. Okay, got you. Yeah, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I honestly, uh, I kind of got to watch a little bit of Chet. On, and side note, Nolan, did you know these teams were in Utah when we, we were there? Yep. I wouldn't want playing, to go to a game, were, man. There was a all the buses were at my hotel. I was like, yeah. Damn. Oh, they damn. were at your hotel. Well, did you stay at the Hyatt? No, I mean, I think they're all staying at Memphis. Ones, unless they were Memphis, using that. Memphis parking walked lot. in. Memphis walked in when we were checking some of the boys in, and I was like, "Who the hell is that?" Point soy, say point yeah. soy. <laughs> but yeah, um, <laughs> well, because they were there, uh, I, was, I kept trying to check his scores, checking if I could go see a game. But then I like highlights would pop up. Man, having Chet back, he looks a. Uh, I think that could be like the difference maker for this team. Um, yeah. I think I think they do make the play in because they've done they did it without him, and they were kind of just always missing that one piece. Chet's long, he scores, he passes well. Like whether he stays healthy or not, that might be a little bit of a. I mean, issue. to be fair, the injury was kind of like a freak injury. It was a freak it's injury, not exactly. Like a chronic kind of. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, it only takes one for yep. it to keep it only happening. Takes one. You know. It only takes one for it to keep happening. So, I mean, that that might be something. Um, like you said, Micic that they brought in, it's going to be a very exciting season to see what yeah. he brings mm-hmm. to that to that team because uh, SGA, man, he he really locks it down for them. And if they go kind of on the double side with the two of them and go play a little bit of small ball with Chet being their, their, their one big, it could be a very uh, fun fun team to watch. But mm-hmm. I, I do think they'd have a, an upside to to actually get into the play uh, the play in by just having Chet alone. But because yeah. that's another weapon that they they were really, really missing last year. And he had kind of shown out before until he got injured. And yeah. right now he's he's kind of showing out. I mean, I'm not saying he's gonna be a superstar, but it's such a great additional piece for them to have mm-hmm. uh look going into the season that they didn't have last year. So oh, yeah. I, I mean for, for them, for them to get into the tenth seed and then add a guy who is literally a top, you know, one two pick. Oh, was he number one? He was one. Yeah. yeah, I was like, so to get a guy who was the number one overall pick and add him back into the lineup, it's a is pretty big a point boom. Guard? Yeah. Michi is a point guard, yeah. He's a point guard. That's so why turn it over to you. To what are your small. thoughts, Nolan? Um, I don't think that this is as small ball as we think it's going to be. Because um, if yeah. you, you do rely and trust the ball in his hands, Micic could be the starting point guard for them. You have SG mm-hmm. at the two, Giddy at the three. He's six eight. He can stretch the floor a little bit. Giddy's young, and I I love Giddy's game because mm-hmm. at least fantasy standpoint, he he fills the stat sheets for you and he gets the job done. Um, and then you have Jalen Williams at the four. You can put Chet at the five. This can be a very 
young and beneficial lineup for them. Um, mm-hmm. Since they are rebuilding, I don't necessarily know what kind of route they're going to take with everything. Um, they may try to see how hard they can push everything and see if Chet really is the t- top tier yeah. kind of addition that they needed. Um, but I think this is going to be a pretty exciting year for them. Um, they still have mm-hmm. so many assets left uh, and so many pieces right now on their, I guess you could say, preseason roster. Because, you know, obviously they shave it down a bit and everyone goes to yeah. the G League mm-hmm. for the ones that are 2 Um They can move a lot of places. Uh, people by the time the trade deadline gets around and if it does yep. look like this team is on the cusp i think that they can make some noise in the west i do agree they will be in the plan um and it really is going to be all dependent on chet because uh, mm-hmm. sga can can push the team enough giddy can push the team enough to get them to maybe that 10th spot that they'll fight for a plan um, but it's really going to take the the production of Chet to make sure that this team looks like it's a viable option for long game. So yeah, um, I like it. I, I like it a lot actually. Yeah, I think this is one of those teams if we like we've something we haven't really necessarily acknowledged yet because this is a draft that's not the greatest um, uh, analytically. There haven't been a lot of guys who really stand out from this next draft class. Um, whereas in this one that just happened, uh, you had the Victor, you had the Scoot, um, you had a lot of big names coming out of it. So a lot of people were tanking more for them. I do feel like this would be a year where teams are uh, trying to be a little bit more competitive because there isn't really that name to drop to the bottom for um, necessarily that sticks out anymore. I mean, if anything, you can be a late lottery and land Bronny James and get LeBron James, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but anyway, moving on from there, we have the New Orleans Pelicans. Um Outwise, they did lose Jackson Hayes to you guys, the Lakers. Um, they did lose Josh Richardson, another rotational piece to Miami. Um, they do bring in Cody Zeller, um, not related to the Josh Richardson move, just happened to be from Miami as well, um, brought in on a minimum contract. And then outside of that, mostly just struck out on a lot of deals regarding you know Zion Williamson um, and that number three, number two overall picks. So... Throwing it over to you, Nolan. Thoughts on this team up, down, where are you at with them? They ain't going anywhere fast. Um, but I will give them a little credit. If Zion comes back and actually plays for a majority of the season, they can be a play-in team. Um, mm-hmm. You have Brandon Ingram, who's first-time All-Star last season, right? Who's first yes. Time? Mm-hmm. Um, if he replicates anything close to what he had last year as efficiency, he'll do fine. Stay, injury, stay off the injury list. <clears throat> um, you still have CJ McCollum, who seems like he may actually be on his decline now from where he used to be. But he yeah. is still, can someone night in, night out, give you a 20-piece if he needs to? Um, that's kind of where the buck stops on that. I think that they didn't make enough moves to do much noise. I, I do like that they still have Trey Murphy and... Um, Herbert Jones, who I think are both defend, uh, defensive stretch forwards. Um, and mm-hmm. I think that it can be something exciting for them, maybe highlight-wise with Trey Murphy, but I don't think that there's much meat to these bones uh, for the Pelicans. So it's it's going to be dependent on what their midseason moves are. Um, mm-hmm. I don't remember how many assets they have left over, uh, but I'm assuming it's still a good amount considering the Anthony Davis trade in the past mm-hmm. as well as certain things here and there. But I, I, I don't know if this team is even going to make the play in. Yeah, it was weird for them to let Jackson Hayes go. I do feel like that was kind of a big piece for them to lose. Yeah, Cody Zeller's nice, but he's a defensive liability. Yeah, I know that was a little weird. Throwing over to you, Jared. I mean, are you up down on this team? Where are you at with them? I'm down, um, man. You don't know how many games Zion's going to play. You don't know how many games Ingram is going to play. We talk about his injury ridden seasons, and you know, yeah, McCollum's good, but. Literally, that's all the, the only name you're really looking at. Yep. I mean, when you're looking at offensive projection. So, uh, mm-hmm. short and sweet, I think they're just going down. Um, I mean, with all the other teams that we've talked about already, uh, kind of on the rise and they, making great moves and bringing in good people. I think, yeah. the, I think like we said, for teams to go up, they gotta go, somebody got to go down, and I think they're one of them. So. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yep. Um, so, kind of moving on with this next team, we got the Minnesota Timberwolves. From here on out, going to do kind of rapid fire-ish um, just to kind of speed up this process but just to give me 
I'm going to ask one of you to give me your full thoughts and the other one just kind of give me one of these up down kind of deals. Uh, so Timberwolves, obviously they add Troy Brown, Shake Milton uh, from the 76ers. They do lose Torian Prince. Nothing much outside of that changes. So Jared, over to you. Up, down, where you at with them? Um, Man, <sighs> it's so tough because I keep saying up, up, up from everybody that came from mm-hmm. down. And yeah, as a sales, like we don't have I mean? many downs, so and, I don't know I who's think, gonna lose. In your... <laughs> yeah, for me, I don't think there's enough that they are doing. I mean, we talked about Anthony Edwards being great, mm-hmm. but I don't think there's enough there for them to kind of stay where they are. So I'm just gonna short and sweet, like you said. I'm gonna head on down to, so other yeah. teams can move on up. Yeah. I was going to say, they may be one of those. I'm um, throwing it over to you, Nolan. Are you up or down with this team? I'm actually going to go up. Uh, what a lot of people mm. don't realize is they, they see the last part of the season where they were trying to push for the play-in. Mm. Um, Carl Anthony Towns was out for the season for about three months. I think that is the biggest piece that needs for them to be successful. If he is off that injury, I think it was a calf strain last season, if he is mm-hmm. off that injury list for most of the season because – he is kind of injury prone as much as people mm-hmm. don't realize compared to a mm-hmm. lot of the other stars in the NBA. If he is able to maintain the paint being plugged with Gobert and Cat, it's going to be dangerous for any team, especially when you face a team like the Warriors, which we'll get to in a bit, right? Now that they're... that said, huh, this guy really needs to shut up. Yeah, he's... he does need to and shut speaking up. Speaking some blasphemy. And say, like... say, That's another say reason why I think I'm swayed. Say to... on the court, right? You know, don't <laughs> say just down, say right? it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, there's a difference between saying you, you have confidence your team and I yeah. can be, you know, the stars of this league. Okay, that's different You're not than that saying, guy. Like, I am the game changer. You're not him <laughs> You're yet, not or if ever. So just make sure you yeah. do it first before you, you start You got to be speaking. on the court to talk, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. So uh, I do think going that they over can to, move up. <laughs> going over to a team that I think is your guys' is obviously your team. Um, we're going to start with the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, they did – they basically swapped their entire bench out um, and then brought a whole new bench in. Uh, they lose Mo Bamba to the Philly, Malik Beasley to Milwaukee, Troy Brown to Minnesota, Dennis Schroeder to Toronto, Lonnie Walker to Brooklyn. They bring in Jackson Hayes from New Orleans, uh, Torian Prince from Minnesota, Cam Reddish from Portland, and Gabe Vincent from Miami. So thoughts on the t- uh, on the moves? Are they going up for you, down for you? Was this kind of a wash moment for you? Where are you at, Nolan? We're going ball. Lonzo Sorry. ball? um no i think i think we have the opportunity to move up now um but as is a common theme in the later part of their seasons staying healthy um because we we've talked about it the team that we ran through the second half with we would have loved to see a full season really blossom together Mm -hmm. now we have this lineup that has a lot of great role guys has a lot of guys that can get it done done themselves um, so if we have that opportunity this season, we may be able to move Anthony Davis to the four a little bit, maybe put Jackson at the five. Um, we can maybe flip around some things, play with some actual fun offense. I know that Anthony Davis loves playing the power forward position. So mm-hmm. maybe if he gets the go on it, then he can actually produce and show a little out, show out a little more. Um, but it's really predicated on how Darwin Ham rotates these guys. Uh, and yeah. The common theme, I think, with a lot of Lakers coaches of the recent years is the rotations have been kind of iffy here and there when they need it most. Mm -hmm. So if he figures it out, this is his sophomore season as a coach for us as a head coach. Give us something good. I know we just added Damari Carroll as an assistant Mm -hmm. coach. He has that bet experience. So maybe I haven't seen him, his coaching kind of resume. So I don't know what he can really bring to the table. Yeah, it sounds like. Uh, We still have Phil Handy, who has been a great developmental coach for a lot of the guys on the team. So I'm excited Mm -hmm. to see what we can do. Um, I think we're going to go up. It's kind of a surprise that D'Angelo got resigned. I'm not even going to lie. Throwing it over to you, Jared. What are your kind of thoughts on the team? Um, You going up, down with your team? Where are you at? I'm thinking up. Um, I think most of the people have said it that Lakers are winning the offseason. You know, yeah, like I mean, they the, definitely the made the most signed, moves, that's for they made sure. The most moves, mm-hmm. and it's the, the moves that are probably going to help the team in the most regard. So, mm-hmm. I think they're they they Nolan, Nolan talked about it already. I'm just going to leave it. They're going on up, yeah, I agree. Um, going over to another team here, 
the Golden State Warriors, who seem to have been the golden standard. <laughs> anyway, um, but going over to the, them for the Western Conference, they do lose Dante DiVincenzo, Ty Jerome, Jordan Poole in the trade uh, with CP3. They do bring in Tracy Jackson Davis, um, hell of a center coming out of center for it, I guess, uh, coming out of college. Corey Joseph, veteran presence, Chris Paul from Phoenix in that big mega trade, and then some other dude whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Uh, but, yeah, so they do bring in those guys and kind of retain the core, obviously. Um, they do bring back Draymond Green this offseason. Where are you at with this team, up or down? I'm Jared, going sorry. up. I'm going mm-hmm. up with them. Um, like you said, veteran presence. Uh, they got a kid in the tra- in, in the draft that's going to bring just a little bit more experience and youth to the team. Resigning mm-hmm. Draymond, I think. Like we said, it, it was going to be him or Paul, right? Resigning Draymond. Yeah. He, it, you can't go wrong. They're starting five right now. Projected starting five right now. I mean, really, you went with the the normal four. You're adding Chris Paul if he's mm-hmm. healthy, when healthy, you know. And then Corey Joseph or Steph can play that position. Like Corey Joseph's like no no pushover either. He's a great backup to have. And then you have the youth in like GP three, GP two, and uh, Moses Moody still there as well. Hopefully, they can do something with Kaminga this year. Uh, mm-hmm. J. Michael Green, when given an opportunity, when Wiggins was hurt, I think he filled in a nice role because he plays D, shoots a three pretty well for them, kind of mm-hmm. helps spread that as well in the same regard. Um, you know, with with all these shooters, again, Draymond holding the ball and being able to bring it up and facilitate the yeah. offense is only going to help them in any regard. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they put Chris Paul as a six man. You know yeah, what I mean? I wouldn't be surprised either. I mean, it was... Chris Paul is a six man, and, and yeah. when, when Steph needs breaks or people need breaks, mm-hmm. like there's nobody else you really want to hold the ball as as, as much oh, as yeah. you're letting Dream on. So. It's like, they're for sure going to try it. And like, if it's not yeah. as great as they're thinking, I think they'll definitely... Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. But um, throwing it over to you, Nolan. Up, down, where you at with the Warriors? I think they're going down. Oh. Um, I think they're going to be a playing team this season. Um, I'm not going to discredit, you know, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, Draymond, mm-hmm. um, CP3. And I know we talked about it and Jared kind of uh, refreshed it. CP3 coming off the bench, your rotation of your guys can be a lot, lot to work with, especially if you put Draymond on the bench and now you can kind of do half court sets, running gun when Steph's on the court, whatever you need to do. Um, but they're just, they're, they're, it's, it's kind of getting to that decline for them. You know, Draymond can only do so much. Clay Thompson is not the night in and night out guy that we had once seen. Steph Curry, still Steph Curry. Um, until he shows any sign of actual decline, I'm not going to say anything against Steph Curry because that's a dangerous game to play. Um, CP3, um, decent right now. Still one of the lead leaders in assists. Um, but the defense on this team is abysmal. Like it, Steph's not, I mean, Clay's not the same two way player that he was. Draymond is only a help defender at best now um you have uh, kevon looney who you know he did great for his role last year if he can repeat that that's fantastic but they're all undersized it's all going to be leg drive and see what they can really work with um i don't see this team really moving much further than where they were last season at the sixth seed i believe um so unless they add something else that's going to be actually pay off for them um, I think the only saving grace that they can have right now is Wiggins, and that would be him being able to perform at you know his peak because he's still young, um, and because he, he's the same draft class as um, Levine, right? So if he yeah. can if he can show out and still keep his peak going, that's what's going to drive them a little further. But if not, then I I see them dropping. Yeah. yeah, the hard part with Wiggins, though, when you think about it, is like he had a lot going on with himself yeah. last year. Yeah. So I mean, it, yeah. it could be mm-hmm. a little bit like, like okay, I had a lot going on and Mental it's a stuff, back here yeah. for him. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think I think that's kind of why it's I was be excited player, for him yeah. this year. So yeah, I was gonna say I was like, it's gonna be like I said, it's gonna be hard to say that they're declining until they're declining. Until they're I mean, like this through. is a te- this is a team that definitely tends to show up when it matters most, but throwing it over to a team that doesn't tend to show up when it matters most, the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, They lose Eric Gordon, big contract. Um, They bring in KJ Martin, not a ton of moves outside of that. Um, Basically keep the core together, 
Russell Westbrook's back. You know, um, they're rumored to be in talks for James Harden. So we'll see how that all plays out. Um, but yeah, I mean, throw it over to you, Nolan. Where are you at with this team? Up, down. Fair. <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's really dependent on their Jordan health. Uh, that's, that's really all I can say. When they're, when they're healthy, they fly. They go, mm-hmm. they go balls to the wall. And mm-hmm. you can't really stop a tand- tandem of Kawhi and Paul George. Now you have Westbrook on a lower contract. People are going to be less or scrutinize him less because now mm. he's not trying to play up to what his giant ass contract used to be. It's him coming yeah. in playing for a small contract. Like, oh, if he can get you, you know, 15, 10, and 10, oh my God, that's the steal of a contract, right? So yeah. now he, he takes a lot of pressure off his back. He plays alongside two future Hall of Famers. And he, I mean, he is a future Hall of Famer himself, but now you have these three, I guess you could say star players on the court together there's no reason why this team shouldn't be successful unless there's injuries involved Mm -hmm. um if they do end up getting james harden that'll be interesting to see as well uh because that's a lot of cooks in the kitchen um but you do have the two injury prone boys and the two that are able to play pretty much full 82 game seasons because they don't get injured as much as the others so I can see them moving up. I can. As it hurts me to say, as a Laker fan, but you got to give it to what you see on paper, man. Like it's they, funny because it really didn't team. sound like you were explaining that they were going to go up. Yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, just kidding. Because when they like when they trash, this guy trash. It's no, it's for him he's to going say down. It. He trash. It hurts for me to say because I do <laughs> like, think this team, and I'm, you know, it's one of those like private <laughs> moments. When it was, I know, like, when it was Laker, so it was like this guy's great, great addition. Unreal D, this dude, this guy, and then it's like Clippers. It was like this guy sucks. This guy sucks. Hey, I didn't They're say any of them suck. Up, Let's be clear. <laughs> like, I didn't say any of them suck. Okay, yeah. I just said they they they're Mister Glass over there. Okay, um, right. but yeah, I I there's no reason why they shouldn't be successful, right? And that's yeah. that's been the mo since they traded for Kawhi and or they got the signings of Kawhi and Paul George. Mm-hmm. There's no reason why this team shouldn't succeed. Jared, where are you at with this team? I actually yeah, think they're going to stay exactly of... where they are. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't really want to say up or down. It's because, like, like Nolan said, on paper, this is a good team. Now, yeah. now history proves that, like, the injury part of it. That's where, I, that's why I don't want to go up. I don't want to go mm-hmm. down. And I, I think, it, honestly, I do think if they do bring in James Harden, there is going to be a lot of cooks in the kitchen. But I do mm-hmm. think we talked about James Harden's strengths now, and I do mm-hmm. think if. If they, that yep. does happen, I, I think they're going up. Yeah, I agree with that. I was like, I, I do think that it's a different kind of cook in the kitchen now. Yeah, yeah I'd agree with that take as well. Yep. Um, swinging over, we have the next team, which is the Phoenix Suns. Obviously, they did make the big swing at the end of or at the trade deadline of last off or last season. Um, I mean, they did add a lot of you know kind of end of the bench pieces, but I mean, clearly we're you know focused on them adding Bradley Beal. They did get Eric Gordon off of uh, the waiver wire there. They did bring in Yuta Watanabe, um, Drew Eubanks, Kate H. Diop, Chimezi Metu. Um, a lot of younger guys, a lot of guys on some good contracts. They did lose Torrey Craig, Chris Paul, Landry Shamet, um, Jack, uh, Jock Londale. So Nolan, or Jared, thoughts on this team? Are they going to be a team that you think is going to be kind of you know, at the top of the Western Conference and possibly a championship contender for real, for real. So they finished fourth because this is what I have to put it in perspective because they finished fourth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. I think I think they dropped just a little bit. I think it's going to be one of those they have to oh. figure it out uh, mm-hmm. with the Bradley Beal situation and everything. I do like what they did this offseason. I do mm-hmm. like that they rebuilt their bench. Um, we talked about like when, when they did the trades and like, Everybody went to the Nets, and they, they kind of gave up a lot of pieces in that regard mm-hmm. just to get Kevin Durant. Now they they're being smart about it. like, hey, our bench really does is gonna, probably going to help us win games. So retaining somebody like Damian Lee, Eric Gordon, you know, players like that that they can help you to Watanabe, and so I think rebuilding the bench might keep them either the same or they're just going to drop off just a little bit because mm-hmm. of the the figuring of how to work together between the the three big all, the mm-hmm. let's be three big all stars on top of like what what rotations on the bench side is really going to work yeah. for them as well. So it's kind of going to mm-hmm. be I, – I, I think that's what's going to be. <clears throat> I know Booker and Durant can already show out and carry them in that regard. 
But yeah. I mean, you can only do so much before one, either a one of them gets hurt, or b they just get like just exhausted. Yeah. From I think Utah load, will so. end up being one of those underrated signings for them for sure mm-hmm. this year. I, um, I remember you, you keep talking about him, and like I totally agree with. Yeah, that. he's just uh, he's just one of those guys that shows up, you know. Yep. You know, like it's not it's not like he. It's gonna drop like forty in a game, what but I, I mean, what I actually like about Utah is um, he's not afraid to meet you at the rim or try to. And you need oh, a yeah, lot more yeah. players like that, regardless mm-hmm. if they're gonna be put on the poster. He's trying to defend and stop the ball. So yeah, granted, he's been on the he's trying to stay in the end. league. That's yeah, what I he's like. trying to. Rec- yeah. He's on the receiving yeah. end a lot, but he's 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 Sean a hard worker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Oh, so are you up or down with them? Sorry, excuse me. Um, because they were the three. I four. think they're gonna sit right where they four. are. They're four. They were the four. Oh yeah, yeah right. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Mm-hmm. I'll think they'll sit around three or four. Um, so maybe on the upside they can go up one rank. Um, yeah. Because I do think they they loaded their roster with a lot of shooters, and on yeah. on a good day, this can look like the prime Warriors if everyone's buying in to not iso ball the whole time. Mm-hmm. They start That's flipping true. it out. Katie takes mm-hmm. it in. This is it to Booker, to Beal, to Utah in the corner. Mm-hmm. It can be pretty basketball if it if it works well. And I think that oh, yeah. that's going to be very dependent to see. Um, who did they pick up as their, their new coach again? Vogel? I don't remember. I'm sorry. That sounds right. Yeah, I think it was him. It was like one of those like, ah. Yeah, I mean, cool. Vogel, <laughs> Vogel did no. come yeah, into Vogel. the Lakers organization as mm-hmm. a defensive-minded coach, so mm-hmm. they, he could turn this kind of shooters-only team into a good help defense team. Mm-hmm. So I do see them at least retaining a high ranking, whether it's three or four. Yeah. It was one of those. That was just a weird, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a whatever signing for me. But um, moving on to the Sacramento Kings. Not a lot of moves made in or out. I mean, they do lose Rashawn Holmes. Um, Jamezi Metu is another guy that they do lose. They bring in Chris Duarte. Um, I believe they just had uh, like a three-teamer trade or two-team trade. Maybe it was just two teams. But um, they give away a lot of second-round picks in that trade to bring him in. Um, but other than that, it's basically just rookies and then kind of running it back with the rest of the team. They did re-sign Harrison Barnes, which was another kind of – Big move for them, I guess. Um, but throwing it over to you, Nolan, are you up or down on the Sacramento Kings team? Um, I do think they're going to take a dip this year. I, mm-hmm. I'm not saying it was a lucky season, but I do think that the players around the league understand what it takes to kind of, you know, just dis- disgruntle this this young running gun team. Um, mm-hmm. Low defense, and they haven't really done anything to improve their defense. Um, adding Chris Doherty was not the, the move to make, I guess you could say. Um, don't mind the um, extension with Sabonis. That's fine. But I do think that this team's going to take a dip. Uh, but they are a dangerous team. They are a team mm-hmm. to keep in mind that it's not like they're just going to roll over and die. Because I think they did have a, a taste of what success can look like last season. And they're going to try to replicate it this season. Uh, but I would have liked to see a little few more moves. Um to kind of bolster their roster rather than re-signing, I guess, I guess vets to make it seem like they're more of a veteran team now. Um, but I do think they're going to drop. I think they'll stay in the playoffs, but they're going to drop from the two. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jared, do you in agreement with him on this one? Yeah, I'm in agreement. Um, yeah. No real defensive moves. And then De'Aaron Fox was clutch player of the year because of how many like clutch shots he actually really had to hit down the stretch. Mm-hmm. I mean, does he, he hit that hit, many? Yeah, exactly. yeah, does he really yeah. hit that many uh, in the same in the next season? And if mm-hmm. he is, then he can be that guy. But I mean, until we see it happen again, that they, they don't put themselves in great positions to say that we're truly a three seed team. Yeah, and then moving on to a team that I know is you know one of our favorites here on the oh, pot, Memphis okay. Grizzlies. Um, they do lose Dylan Brooks. They do lose Tyus Jones in the Washington trade. Uh, they do bring in Josh Christopher. They bring in Derek Rose. Um, and they make the big trade um, with for Marcus Smart. Uh, Jared, where are you at with them, up or down? Definitely down. Um, their, their man, you know, gone for 26, what, 26 games. You mm-hmm. know, um, Dylan Brooks. I mean, it's nice that Bain got paid. You got Marcus Smart. So the defensive side of the ball is going to be mm-hmm. a little more controlled defensive side of the ball, you know, and we know Smart can put the ball in the basket as well when needed to. But, I mean, they're, they're the two seed. 
they don't do enough or they're not doing enough on the, in that regard to, for me, at least stay the two seed. There's going to be teams that are going to surpass them, but they, yeah. they make the playoffs. I think they make the playoffs. I don't know yeah. where, but I think they make the playoffs. Yeah. Context wise. I mean, yeah, I mean, for sure. Second seed. That's, it's pretty up there. They're going to have to perform yeah. very well next year with this yeah. score. So door number, you know, are you up or down on them as well? Um, yeah, taking a hit with losing Morant is going to be kind of a downward spiral. Um, I don't want to say it's because of him, but when you didn't have Morant last season, you also had Dylan Brooks, who had been playing alongside that team for a while, who can kind of help run the ship while Morant was away, whether it was for injury, whether it was for violence, personal, or, for or whatever you want to call reasons. it. Uh, for reasons, basketball reasons. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they're going to take a dip. Uh, but they still have a solid roster. They're going to be getting um, Stephen Adams back, who I think was a big, big, mm-hmm. big defensive piece for them, um, especially if he had, they had them against the Lakers. It could have been a different series. Um, mm-hmm. Xavier Tillman, he showed something real nice in the playoff run that they had. So he, I think he can probably retain some playing time as needed. Uh, you still have JJJ. And Bane getting paid, hopefully that kind of boosters his confidence a little bit more when he's on the court because mm-hmm. he's still that – he's a great player. Um, and I think that it's going to run through him for the first half of the season because they don't have Morant. And Marcus Smart is – he's no scrub, right? He's a defensive player of the year. JJJ is a defensive player of the year. So on all fronts, mm-hmm. you have two guys who can defend probably m- multiple best players on the team um, mm-hmm. as needed. So I do think that, like Jared said – Playoff team, I just don't know where. I'm just kind of hoping they trade John Morant. I'm not gonna lie. I was like, honestly, to that would be Bulls? nah, nah, hell no. To the Clippers for Paul George. Anyway, um, the Nuggets. <laughs> you know, we're gonna talk about them. Um, obviously, the champions last year. They were the number one seed last year as well. Um, they do not. Oh, I mean, they do actually. No, I take that back. They did lose Bruce Brown. They lost Thomas Bryant. They lost Jeff Green. Um, Jack White is also there, but we're not not a really great piece. And then they just basically add Justin Holiday. Um, they do kind of resign um, Reggie Jackson, who is about the only other piece I know that had to get resigned. And other than that, or I know DeAndre Jordan, another guy who had to get resigned. But um, other than that, not a ton of big moves. Um, where are you at with the Denver Nuggets, Nolan? Um. Losing Bruce Brown is a big piece, but if you have someone who can fill in exactly like that, then it's, it's really no harm, no foul. Uh, yeah. because, I like Justin Holiday. Yeah. I think he's that guy. Yeah. Uh, their starting lineup is still there. So I don't see why they would drop at all. And when you mm-hmm. have a player like Jokic, it really doesn't matter who you put around him. He's going to find you mm-hmm. and make you a better player. So I don't see them dropping from the one at all. <laughs> Who's better, Prime Jokic or Prime Dwight? Oh, we're doing this today. Just, just throwing it out there. We don't have to <laughs> go full detail. We ain't got that much time anyway. So, you know, keep it short. Keep it sweet. Just asking you. For right what you would think is question. a center, Dwight was a better center, but Jokic is the better player. There he goes. Giving us a roundabout answer. Am I wrong? No... Am I wrong? So I think Jokic you will be ranked the pod, higher in the, no answer the annals of history. Yeah, there was literally no answer given. <laughs> It's like for yeah, black we're, guys, we're, white we're for white guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically what, it's basically what you, you said. So you have uh, no actual Asian answer guys, for that question. Ming. Let's go, everybody. <laughs> Utah Watsonabe. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa. Uh, but throw it over to you, Jared. Where are you at with this team? And then <laughs> maybe you can answer the question. After. I, I went, my I went, question no, okay. wasn't wrong. Uh, my I'll, answer I'll, wasn't wrong. I'll, I'll wrong. get to Nolan's one afterwards. And an answer. Um, you basically Nolan. picked both of them. <laughs> Dolan was definitely right, though, um, with Bruce Brown. I mm. mean, that's a big loss. But the way Christian Braun was playing t- at the end of the season, yeah. stepping in that mm-hmm. role, I think that's 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 maybe that's why they were a little okay letting Brown go because mm-hmm. Braun filled Brown go Braun filling in. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> uh, you're you're yeah. losing me too. So I know. Brown, trust Brown, me. Brown, Brown. Yeah, brown, 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 brown. No, but yeah, so, brown, brown, <laughs> brown, brown, and Bryant. All no. <laughs> say that but, ten times fast. Go. But you said um, top. The, their starting five doesn't 
didn't leave. I mean, they're all still there. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I'm with Nolan. I really don't think they're leaving the the one seed. Yeah, I agree with that. And to answer your so, question, um, I, I, I'm just going to say Jokic. Wow. I just enjoy yeah. and I think he does so much. No, I and need he, no. He does so much as a player, like just, mm-hmm. you know, the facilitating. Yeah. He's a triple-double master. He can score yeah. when he needs to score. He takes the weirder shots and somehow they go in. And, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Dwight. I do. But I'm going to mm-hmm. have to say Jokic. There's an answer, yeah. Nolan. There you go. That's a real answer. It Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, this ran a lot longer than I expected it to, but here we are at the end of this podcast. We thank you for joining us on After the Buzzer. As always, the socials will be in the bottom somewhere down below, whether you're checking us on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, uh, in the podcast in the podcast description will be there as well. Uh, but we thank you for joining us once again. As always, it has been a pleasure. It's been a joy from all of us here at Poi and Soy. Good vibes and love, everybody. Bang, bang. Shoots, butter.